my name is Monica Jones. I'm a TV journalist in Berlin, and I'm now going to talk to a scientist in Brussels. Her name is uh, Professor Françoise Remarque. She's director of research with uh, FNRS at the University of Liège. Going to tell you a little bit more about her. She's also a world leading scientist in application of quantum mechanics to the behavior of matter. She directs international teams of researchers towards the development of novel quantum technologies. Her work has been recognized by both European and American awards. And here it comes. She's also a renowned teacher and she's presented classes on quantum technologies at both Belgian, European, and Israeli universities. And that's going to be very, very helpful for this. This talk now uh, because the talk is on quantum technologies, reality or imagination, a role for space. Tricky talk, no doubt, and I'm very happy to welcome now Professor Remarco. Good to have you with us. Uh, and please have mercy on me. Let's uh, agree, first of all, that there is no such thing as a stupid question. And I'm sure that everybody who is watching it, just like myself, we've heard about quantum physics but we don't really have a clue what it's all about or why we should care for that matter. Uh, but I'm sure we'll care about it uh, after we've spoken to you. So, so let's get started. First of all, I mean, we've all heard about classical physics. That's what we learned at school. How does quantum physics differ from it? It's a question of scale. Classical mechanics governs the motion of planet. Quantum mechanics governs the property of matter at the atomic scale. And these scales are very, very small scales of length, of time, and of masses. And the important point is that at these scales, the discreteness of matter has important measurable consequences. And by discreteness, I mean that matter is made of atom and light is made of sub entities that are called photon. And the fact that matter has a discrete character and is made of atom was already postulated by a Greek philosopher called Democritus almost 2,500 years ago. And atom means in Greek that cannot be cut. So it is really the entities or the sub-entities of which matter is made. But speculation becomes science only when we can probe them and verify them experimentally. And it is only at the turn of the 20th century, so a century ago, essentially, that it became possible to probe the quantum discrete uh, nature of matter and of energy. So, as I already said, uh, atomic theory was present throughout the development of physics and chemistry that light can be made of corpuscle was already put forward by René Descartes and Isaac Newton in the 17th century. But in the years and in the centuries that follows, it is another theory of light, a continuous theory that light is made of waves that become dominant. And that was able to explain all the experiments that, that it was possible to make at the time. But at the turn of the 20th century, there were new experimental capabilities that could not be explained, that, were, that made measurement that could not be explained by a classical theory. And a famous one is uh, known as the UV catastrophe. And to solve the problem, first Max Planck in 1901 and then Albert Einstein in 1905 proposed the concept of a quantum of light that they called the photon. At the same time, it was also uh, shown experimentally that the energy in atom is discrete. And it was uh, proved by measuring discrete peaks in emission atomic spectra. And these experiments and others led to the development of quantum mechanics. And quantum mechanics was established very quickly uh, by the late 1920s. It was a complete theory that was able to explain all the experimental results that were available at the time. And up to now, all the prediction of quantum mechanics have been 
verified experimentally. I mean, it's quite amazing when you say that it's been around for so many decades and it still is an enigma to most of us. Uh, but I should imagine that that is also the reason why it is so fascinating. It's incomprehensible to most people, but at the same time fascinating. I, I think that the incomprehension that is generated by quantum mechanics has to do with the fact that quantum mechanics uses a logic that is at variance with our day-to-day -day life. Uh, one of the most um, important example, important because it has important consequences in quantum mechanics and important because it makes it very weird, is this property of delocalization. Uh, according to the law of quantum mechanics, I can be here discussing with you and at the same time in my office in Liège. Another very weird aspect is that of the Schrödinger cat, which is a famous thought experiment that is uh, discussed a lot in uh, quantum physics. And there the weird aspect is that the cat can be simultaneously alive and dead, which is not something that we experiment in our day-to-day -day life. And so all these properties are extremely weird, but they stood the test of time, even though very many scientists and very famous scientists like Einstein strongly objected to them. One of the uh, most important properties in quantum mechanics is that the, um, as much as light that is made of photon can then behave like a particle, at the atomic scale like electron or atoms, can also behave as waves. And this is known as the wave-particle duality. And this is a concept that was formalized by a very young French uh, scientist who was also an aristocrat. He was called Louis de Broglie, and he put forward this uh, concept in his thesis in 1924. This idea was so much novel that it took the support of Albert Einstein for his thesis to be accepted. What the De Bruyne uh, relation states is that to every um, atom or electron, one can associate a wave whose wavelength is given by the inverse of the product of its mass times its velocity. The wavelength is inversionally proportional to the mass and the velocity of the particle. And if you think of the very, very small masses of electron and atoms, one then obtains a wavelength that is large enough, it is very small, but it is large enough that it is possible to measure the consequences of this particle having also a wave that is associated to them. And then one can measure diffraction patterns, for example. Of course, because our masses, mine, yours, are so much bigger, it means that the wavelengths will be even smaller and much, much more smaller than the wavelengths that is associated with atomic scale particle. And for this reason, one cannot measure the consequences of the wave character that is associated to macroscopic object. And so the, the discreteness of energy and also the fact that at the atomic scale we have direct manifestation of the wave character of particles, so the consequences of this wave-particle uh, duality were exploited very early after the development of uh, quantum mechanics and became technologies. And one of very famous of the very famous example, the laser that is present nowadays in a lot of aspects of our life. The laser I use in CD players, in remote control. Uh, another example are the transistors that are in our computer, in our phones, and even now in our fridge. All these examples of technologies are direct consequences of this weird 
properties of uh, quantum mechanics. I have to check my fridge because I was trying to, <laughs> it's, it's amazing, I, I've been trying to follow you and uh, here and then you lost me, uh, but uh, I think you did a perfect Richard Feynman then, obviously a famous uh, uh, theorist on, on quantum. Uh, he once said to his students that if you understand what I'm going to explain to you, then it's because I misspoke. Um, having listened to you just now, uh, I wonder, are we actually meant to grasp the nature of uh, quantum physics? Could we just try again? Could you sort of uh, uh, explore again in layman's terms what it is about? Yes, yes, uh, let us continue. Um, I think as we are continuing to discussing, things will gradually become clearer. Now, Richard Feynman really liked to be provocative, but for what we have already discussed, it is clear that quantum mechanics does not obey the same kind of logic as the one that is uh, usually used in classical physics. And therefore, somebody who wants to stick with the frame of thinking of uh, classical physics will find quantum mechanics extremely non-intuitive. Uh, by the way, Richard Feynman was very visionary in how we could exploit the weird property of quantum mechanics. And for example, in a famous talk in 1981 and then in a paper, he really launched the idea of a quantum computer, which is one of the most promising uh, technologies that are built on this weirdness of quantum mechanics that is now becoming available. So Feynman said that because the, the physics of quantum system was so different from that that is predicted by the laws of classical physics, we should not use classical computer to try to simulate quantum system, but instead we should use a quantum computer. And this was really the beginning of the effort to develop these quantum computers that, as I said, nowadays became uh, available. Another very visionary uh, statement of Richard Feynman that he made much earlier in uh, 1959 is to say there is plenty of room at the bottom. And by this he meant that we should exploit the, the discreteness of charge, of energy, of small particles that are called uh, nanoparticles that are uh, aggregates of atoms and, and sometimes molecules to build new materials, to build new sensors. And this was the, the prediction or the prelude to the development of uh, nanotechnologies. But this occurred much later in 1990. So we, we have this on the one hand, the discreteness of energy, the uh, wave particle duality, we, we have uh, the possibility to build material at the nanoscale that now are available and all this progress really puts us in a new regime where we can start to really exploit the weird properties of uh, quantum mechanics. 